I'm Jack, Peatland Restoration Officer as part of the New Life for Welsh Raised Bogs project that's led by Natural Resources Wales. We're here on Cors Vochno today for International Bog Day, an annual event to celebrate the importance and brilliance of bogs that we have here in the UK. What are we going to cover as part of this video? What is the New Life for Welsh Raised Bogs project? First of all, why is it needed and what is the background behind the project? But most interestingly, what are the actions that are going to be delivered on the ground as part of the project? We're also joined by Justin Lyons, Senior Land Manager of the Dewey National Nature Reserve, who's going to talk about what is a lowland raised bog, why is Coles Vochno special, and what is favourable and unfavourable condition raised bog. I'll stop talking now, let's have a trudge out onto the centre of the bog and have a look round. The Life Welsh Raised Bogs project is the first national peatland restoration programme in Wales. We're a £4 million EU Life and Welsh Government funded project aimed at restoring seven of the best examples of raised bogs in Wales. The sites have suffered due to poor wetland management in the past and this has meant that invasive plants have moved in, crowding out some of the important sphagnum mosses. Raised bogs provide multiple benefits for the environment, wildlife and people. They help us store carbon in the fight against climate change, they store water and help us purify the water. They are also great places for people to enjoy the natural environment and are homes to important wildlife. In partnership with local communities, landowners and contractors, we are using different restoration methods. We will be introducing highland cattle to graze the sites, we will also be cutting the dense millennia grass, we will also be removing invasive plants like rhododendron and invasive trees and we'll also be creating low level contour burns in the hope to restore natural water levels on the sites. Hello my name is Justin Lyons and I work for Natural Resources Wales here on the Dovey National Nature Reserve. Dovey National Nature Reserve includes Anislas sand dunes towards the estuary of the uh, Dovey River and the Dovey estuary over there and the other bit of the uh, National Nature Reserve is here on Cors Rochnow. Um, Cors Rochnow is a lowland raised bog and here in the central area um, we're on 200 hectares of pristine raised bog. It's the largest area of undamaged raised bog in the whole of the UK so it's a really really special site. Um, in Wales um, over the last few hundred years lots of lowland raised bog habitat has been lost for various reasons um, and now we only have 5% remaining in the sort of condition that you can see in front of you here with lots and lots of sphagnum, really really high water table and a high diversity of specialist plants like the sundews, um, the different types of sphagnum and all the rare um, animals that live here as well, things like damselflies, moths, um, crickets and so forth. So it's a really really special area. Raised bogs are characterised if they're in a healthy condition by having a water table very, very close to the surface. As you can see here, I'm now my feet have compressed the ground and I'm now in a, in a couple of pools of water. So it literally needs to be within 10 centimetres of the surface for the majority of the year. And you can just see how much of a giant sponge the raised bog is if I sort of just jump up and down and wobble a little bit. You hopefully see the actual surface of the bog moving. So here we go, one, two, three. So here you can see, you can see the surface of the bog wobbling uh, in front of me and that's a, that's a really really good sign that the bog's in a healthy condition. So sphagnum moss is the most important plant of a raised bog and it moulds how it is. It is the habitat engineer of this particular type of habitat. So and this is all about the amount of water that sphagnum can hold on to. So if I'm, I've got a handful of sphagnum here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze out as much water as possible. Here we go. So if you imagine the whole surface of the bog, of which a lot of the out further out on the bog is covered in sphagnum, you'll see that it holds on to huge quantities of water. And not only does it hold on to the water when it's alive, but also its remains as it dies, as it grows upwards, still hold on to the water as well. And the remains also have special chemicals on in it that prevent it from decomposing so quickly. And what happens to the plant remains is that they go towards creating peat, which is a very special type of soil. So peat is the remains of plants, mainly sphagnum here on the lowland raised bog, 
and is almost wholly made out of the remains of plants. And here on Korswochno, the peat has been accumulating over the last four to five thousand years and it's covered the whole of the estuarine plain between four and then down towards the Dovey estuary, so a vast area. The whole of Korswochno originally could have been anything up to a thousand hectares, a vast area. The reserve now is about six to seven hundred hectares of uh, lowland raised bog, but originally it was much, much, much larger. So what I thought we could do is when that bog started growing here four to five thousand years ago, as I say, it was estuarine uh, plain with salt marsh and brackish marshes and so forth, and the soil was a clay-like material, which was silt that had been washed down the Dovey estuary. So what we're going to do now is we've got some drain rods here, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to push them into, into the ground and see how deep the, uh, the uh, peat is and how much has accumulated over the last four to five thousand years. If we're really lucky, we might get a little plug of clay in the end of the drain rod um, from the base, of the base of the peat where it goes down into the clay. So here we go. Number one. Number two. Number three. So they go easily through the peat, but when we eventually get to the clay, it's much harder and it'll be very difficult to push the pole in. Number four. going in there. Number five. And then number six. Oh, definitely harder now. I think we must Yep. I think we must be at the clay now. So that was number six. So we're gonna pull the rods out now and see how deep the peat is. About up to about half a rod there, wasn't it? Oh, nearly there. Comes the last one. There we go. And let's see what we've got at the end. So I was hoping we might find some clay at the end. And it looks like we have. Can you see that sort of bluey greyness at the end there? So here uh, we've got a plug of uh, blue estuarine clay. So this would have been at the base of the uh, Dovey Valley four and a half thousand years ago and the last time this clay probably saw daylight was about four and a half thousand years ago as you can see it's it's definitely clay like material and you can see that and that would have come down the uh, Dovey Valley in the uh, in the river four and a half thousand years ago well we're here in the middle of course Rockno, um, on the sort of flat plateau top of the of the race bog and this area is characterised by a mosaic of these sphagnum lawns like this area here in between ridges of uh, slightly drier areas with heather on. Um, these wonderful lawns are dominated by this beautiful golden sphagnum um, called sphagnum pulchrum and that translates as beautiful sphagnum and it really is a wonderful golden yellow colour and you can see the um, sun dews all over this area here so that's, a, that's wonderful. As time goes on, as the bog becomes more and more healthy, then these areas start to get colonised by other species of sphagnum, like this wonderful red one that we have here, and this is called Sphagnum magellanicum. And it's a beautiful, chunky red sphagnum. Across the whole site, we have about 16 different species of sphagnum. Well, we thought it was 16, until recently we had a specialist on site, um, and he managed to find another species, a particularly rare one, called Sphagnum volticum, which is only found in seven places. Amongst the uh, sphagnum pulchrum bogs that we just looked at, there are hummocks as well in the central area of the bog, and this shows how healthy this particular area is. And this particular hummock in front of us is of a species called sphagnum beothum. And this is a real rarity on site, but it's doing very well on site. We had a recent survey, and it appears to be doing really, really well. It's a really interesting species. Recently, we had, um, when we had the drought period for a couple of months, then a lot of the sphagnums across the site, they got bleached and they went all crispy and they looked really unhealthy. But I was fortunate enough to be out just at the start of June and I came across, well, it could have been this hummock, but it, all hummocks of the sphagnum day of them. And they still looked like it had rained yesterday. They looked really, really healthy. 
and that's because it has this amazing ability to hold on to the water and sometimes it draws it up from deep down in the bog as well and it remains healthy even during very dry weather. So if you were playing top trump sphagnums, then if you wanted one with superpowers, this one would be the top trump superpower for holding on to water. Here we can see lots of cross-leaved heath, that's the small pink flowers. Cross-leaved heath is the food plant for the large heath butterfly. The large heath is a peatland specialist and depends on low and raised bog habitat. Cross-leaved heath is a typical species that's um, present on favourable condition or low and raised bogs that's in good condition. Raised bogs are a difficult place to live for all plants and animals as well. So we get a lot of specialist species here because not only is it really, really wet um, and really acidic, but also there's very little nutrients uh, available to the plants that grow here because it's all locked up in the peat that's uh, below our feet. So every plant has a different strategy um, to get hold of nutrients. So one particular group of plants that we get here, the sundews, have got a very interesting way of going about that. And we're very lucky here on, on Course Vocalo in that we have three species of this type of plant called sundews. We have round leaf sundews, which are fairly common. You can get them in the uplands and sometimes in the lowlands like we do here. And then we have intermediate sundew, which grows on the edge of the bog. But out here in the middle of the bog, on these lovely sphagnum lawns that we have, then we have this wonderful plant here called Greater Sundew. And this is a real raised bog specialist, and you'll only find it on these sphagnum lawns. And you can see it's got these bright red hairs, and at the end of the red hairs, it exudes a sticky substance that attracts insects, anything from a little midge that might be biting us to a damselfly or a dragonfly. And they're attracted to it and then they get stuck to the hairs and they struggle even more and eventually they die. And then the plant's able to release enzymes onto the body of the insect and then it absorbs the nutrients that it needs particularly after nitrogen to make its proteins and so forth. So that's its strategy for dealing with the low nutrient content, uh, low nutrient availability of the ground here. And you'll only find this plant on, on very few sites across Wales, but here it's everywhere. So this uh, shrub in front of us, um, which is found all over the site here, um, on the edges it grows a little bit taller and then in the middle of the bog it only grows about this high. So here, this lovely looking plant is called bog myrtle and what's special about it is if you pick a few of the leaves like that and smell it, it has this beautiful strong smell, a bit like, um, I always think it's a bit like eucalyptus, but it's, yeah, it's a really lovely smell. But not only is it an interesting plant to have here on the bog um, with its wonderful smell, but also it's the food plant of a really rare moth that we have here. So the moth's caterpillar feeds almost exclusively on, on the bog myrtle leaves. And this moth is called the rosy marsh moth. Uh, and it was thought to be extinct in the UK up until um, the 1960s when it was found again uh, here on Korsvochno. There's quite a story about that, but I won't tell that now. Um, but it's, it's, kind of, it's the moth itself is a is a brown 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 moth. It doesn't look particularly wonderful, but its caterpillar is really beautiful with longitudinal stripes down its length. I've got a picture here. Here we go. There's its caterpillar. It's not quite that big, um, but it comes out in the uh, early spring, and then it crawls up these stems and then it feeds on the leaves up until about the end of May and then it um, goes back down and pupates and emerges again in July as, as uh, the adult moth. So if we were to come here in the evening and set up a moth trap, I'm sure we would actually find some uh, this evening. So it's a really special species that we have here. It's a, a, a red data book species and uh, population that we've monitored here um, since the 70s and 80s is doing really well. So that's a fantastic species that we get here on the bog. It's probably well known the many benefits that peatlands in good condition provide. 
They improve water quality. They store water, acting as a natural flood management tool, preventing flooding downstream. They store carbon when in good condition, taking it from the atmosphere, whereas bogs in bad condition release it into the atmosphere. They also support a range of rare and threatened species that depend on this habitat.